and even beyond to go back go backway tepe from the 10th millennium before Christ. In our traditions, Easter follows the first Sunday after the first full moon following the vernal equinox. So you have to have the vernal equinox, then the full moon, and then the next Sunday is Easter. Among other things, it's so it symbolizes the solo logos' emergence from incarnation in the material world. So the, where the logos has endured limitation and suffering, while encased in matter, just as the Lord Christ suffered at his crucifixion. The earthly temple was destroyed, as he predicted, and the veil of the mysteries were rent asunder. When we have learned to sacrifice all of our personal desires and wants, then will the veil be rent for us, and we will know ourselves to be one with God. I brought a selection from Bishop Leibeter's book, the inner side of Christian festivals, which I'd like to read. It says, Great are the storms and tribu tribulations of winter, but the sun god survives them all, and his strength is steadily growing as the days lengthen toward the vernal equinox. At that name, at, excuse me, at that equinox, as the name implies, day and night are exactly equal all over the world. And after it, if the sun crosses a line so that the northern hemisphere, in the northern hemisphere, the days grow steadily longer. And the victory of the sun god over night is assured. He rises triumphantly over the line and ascends in the heavens, ripening the corn and the wheat, pouring his life into them to make their substance and through them himself to his to his worshipers. Every one of us in turn will, will undergo the suffering symbolized by the cross. Every one of us must learn how to give himself up utterly for others, but also for every one of us is the glory of Easter, the resurrection, the victory, the triumph over matter. That still remains ever and gloriously true. The victory which one gains over the lower nature is something which must be achieved in the life of every Christian. There must come in, in this life a point at which he triumphs over the lower matter and rises out of the darkness of sin and ignorance into the light of wisdom and the higher and pure, purer life. Easter is not only the commemoration of something in the far distant past, it is a real day of celebration and of thankfulness for the victory which we have which we will gain throughout all through the ages over which is lower that which is less developed and every one of us there is a divine spark that Christ said ye are, ye are gods ye are all the children of the most high and every one of us that divine spark is the true person and that spark manifests in the lower planes in the soul and that, in turn, puts down still, to still lower levels the personality, which we know as the self down here. So we are only a tiny fragment of a fragment of a magnificent reality. That which we see as ourselves to be down here is, as it were, a seed of the future glory. But each one of us is also a soul. More than that, each is a spirit, the divine spark, slowly, slowly unveiling itself and slowly developing the qualities which it can show through which it can show itself so that man may know it for what it is. Just as this personality has to become one with the soul, so the soul in turn has to become one with the divine spark which it represents. And then later still, the divine spark sweeps back into the flame of which it is a part, and God is all in all. So 
As we say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Today, I hope that we will keep in mind all those who have passed over from material existence into another existence. It's been a great tide of humanity moving that direction this this, uh, year. So we need to remember those who have passed as well as those who are grieving and suffering loss. I've celebrated two requiems in the last two weeks, general requiems, to help those who are passing over. And we'll probably celebrate more. Keep them in our hearts and our minds. Now to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, be ascribed as is justly due, all might, majesty, power, and dominion, now and forevermore. Amen. Now we will continue with the act of faith. We believe that God is love and power and truth and light, that perfect justice rules the world, that all his sons shall one day reach his feet, however far they stray. We hold the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man. We know that we do serve him best when best we serve our brother man. So shall his blessing rest on us and peace forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you and with our spirit. We adore thee, O God, who art the source of all life and goodness, and with true and thankful hearts we offer unto thee this token of thine own life-giving gifts bestowed upon us. Thou who art the giver of all. According to memorial custom, we now mix water with this wine, praying thee, O Lord, that we may evermore abide in Christ and he in us. We offer unto thee, O Lord, this chalice with joy and gladness. May the worship which we offer ascend before thy divine majesty as a sacrifice pure and acceptable in thy sight. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
As this incense rises before thee, O Lord, so let our prayer be set forth in thy sight. Let thy holy angels encompass thy people and breathe forth upon them the spirit of thy blessing. May the Lord enkindle within us the fire of his love and the flame of everlasting charity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, as now it ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Brethren, we have built a temple for the distribution of Christ's power. Let us now prepare a channel for its reception. And to that end, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice at thy hands and sanctify our lives in his service. We lay before thee, O Lord, these thy creatures of bread and wine, linking them spiritually with ourselves and praying thee to receive through them our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. For here we offer and present unto thee ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a holy and continual sacrifice unto thee. May our strength be spent in thy service and our love poured forth upon thy people. Thou who livest forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times in all places give thanks unto the Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with thrones, dominations, princes, virtues, powers, with cherubim and seraphim, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O oh Lord, these are oblations that served as tokens and channels of our love and devotion toward thee. And now we break the link with us and with all lower things, and we pray thee to purify 
and to hallow them as earthly channels of thy wondrous power. We desire to offer this holy sacrifice, especially for thy holy Catholic Church, for the President of the United States of America, and all that are put in authority under him, for William, our presiding Archbishop, for all our bishops, clergy, and faithful, for those who are present, and for all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially for And for those who are again about to enter this holy life through the portal of birth, and likewise for their mothers to be, especially for. And likewise, to offer for all those thy children who have, who have been delivered from the burden of the flesh, especially for all those who have suffered from counted virus. That freed from earthly toil and care, they may enjoy the felicity of thy presence, evermore praising thee in word and deed, O God, everlasting, living, and true. Wherefore, O holy Lord, Father Almighty, we pray thee to look down on and accept as a channel these offerings, and with thy Holy Spirit and word to bless, approve, and ratify them that they may become for us the most precious body and blood of thy Son. who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hands and with his eyes lifted up to heaven unto thee God his almighty father giving thanks to thee he blessed break and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat ye all of this for this is my body In like manner, after he had supped, taking also this noble chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to thee, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of this, for this is my blood. As oft as ye shall do these things, ye shall do them in remembrance of me. Come on. 
all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, monarch of the angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, throned on thine altar, ever to thee be highest glory given. Word of the Father, splendor everlasting, O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, our Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, bearing in mind the ineffable sacrifice of thy Son, to offer unto thee this, the most precious gift which thou hast bestowed upon us, in token of our love and of the perfect devotion and sacrifice of our minds and hearts to thee. And we pray that thou wouldst command thy holy angel to bear our oblation to thine altar on high, there to be offered by him who is eternal high priest, wherever offers himself, as the eternal sacrifice. And we do pray for thy servant who ministers at this altar, that meetly celebrating the mysteries of the most holy body and blood of thy Son, that he may be filled with thy mighty power and blessing. Likewise, we pray thee to sanctify thy people here present with these thy heavenly gifts. And through these mysteries do thou hallow, quicken, and bless them that both in their hearts and in their lives they may show forth thy praise and glorify thy holy name. All these things do we ask, O Father, in the name and through the mediation of thy most blessed Son. For we acknowledge and confess with our hearts and lips that by him were all things made, yea, all things both in heaven and earth. With him, as in dwelling life, do all things exist. And in him, as a transcendent glory, all things live and move and have their being. To whom with the Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, he ascribed all honor and glory throughout the ages of ages. Amen. Now let us pray, following the tradition of Holy Church from of old. We say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. He do give unto thee, O Lord, most high praise and heartfelt thanks for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in the Holy Lady Mary, our Heavenly Mother, and in all thy glorious saints from the beginning of the world who have been the choice vessels of thy grace and a shining light unto many generations. And we join with them and worship before thy great white throne, whence flow all love and light and blessing through all the worlds which thou hast made. O Son of God, who showest thyself this day upon a thousand altars, and thou art one and indivisible, in token of thy great sacrifice, to break this thy body. Praying that by this action, ordained from of old, thy strength, thy peace, and thy blessing, 
which thou dost give us in this holy sacrament, may be spread abroad upon thy world. And as thou, O Lord Christ, was made known to thy disciples in the breaking of bread, so may thy many children know themselves to be one in thee, even as thou art one with the Father. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with the Spirit. O Thou, who in this adorable sacrament hath left us a living memorial in place of Thy marvelous love for mankind, and thus therein graciously draw us into wondrous and mystic communion with Thee, grant us so to receive the sacred mysteries of Thy body and blood, that our souls may be lifted into the immensity of Thy love, and that being filled with high endeavor, we may ever be mindful of Thine indwelling presence and breathe forth the fragrance of a holy life. Amen. Ye that desire to partake of this most holy sacrament, draw nigh and receive this holy sacrament. (laughs) The body and blood of our Lord Christ, keep thee unto life eternal. Amen. body and blood of our Lord Christ. Keep thee unto life eternal. Amen.
of earthly things, now have we communion with our Lord Jesus Christ. Soon with open face shall we behold him, and rejoicing in his glory be made like unto him. Then shall his true disciples be brought before the presence of his Father's glory. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. We who have been refreshed with thy heavenly gifts do pray thee, O Lord, that thy grace may be so grafted inwardly in our hearts that it may continually be made manifest in our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with our spirit. Ite me, he says, Deo gratias. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And may the Holy Ones, as pupils you aspire to become, show you the light you seek and give you the strong aid of their compassion and their wisdom. There is a peace that passeth understanding. It abides in the hearts of those who live in the eternal. There is a power that maketh all things new. It lives and moves in those who know the self as one. May that peace brood over you, that power uplift you, till you stand where the one initiator is invoked, until you see his star shine forth. Amen.